Welcome to The Back Cover, the podcast that explores the classic soul music of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I'm Karen Williams. Join me and my co-host Steve Williams, no we're not related, as we flip over the album covers and share stories of the movers and shakers that created, wrote, and produced those iconic sounds. We'll educate and entertain you, all while keeping the music alive. Welcome to episode number 26. It's been a long time coming, but we've got another podcast for you. As you know, Steve and I have been putting together our Sound of Soul radio station that can be found on soundofsoul.net, and lots of things have been coming together. So let me give you a quick rundown on what's happening. We've got three great shows that are running right now. We've got Bowl of Soul Uh, Terry Ferguson, who uh, provides some really interesting uh, old school music and a little new school R&B by artists that are up and coming. And her show runs on our station at 1 p.m. on Saturday and then again at Tuesday at 1 p.m. And for the entire month of November, we're going to be repeating all of these shows. So Monday evening at 6 o'clock p.m., her show will be repeating also. Then we've got the Blues Buffet. Man, this show is so good. James the Boogeyman Mason plays some of the best blues and R&B around. I love this show. We're running him on 6.30 on Saturday. That's his new show with a repeat at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. And then, of course, Steve and I are on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. live. So you can catch us live on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And of course, all of these times are Central Standard Time. Then in our show on Fridays, we have the Prophetess of Sports. Now, if I was a betting woman on sports, I would have my notes out. This woman is like 80, 85% accurate every week on who is going to win, not only NFL, but uh, baseball and some other sports. She gives us the rundown every Friday at 3.20 on our show. We repeat her at noon on Saturdays. Miss Jennifer Allen, man, and she's so funny. You've got to tune in to hear her. And again, if I said, if you were a betting person, that's all I say. Not encouraging people to gamble. Of course, no. And then we've got a new show coming on Saturdays at 8 a.m. called Reclaiming Your Health because we feel it's important that our audience know how to keep themselves healthy. And that's going to be featuring Miss Nakia Barksdale and it'll be running at 8 a.m. on Saturday mornings. So as you can see, we've got quite a bit of uh, programming coming up. We're looking for more programming to keep you entertained. But it's always, as always, When there's no programming on there, you can listen to the best 60s, 70s, 80s, and some 90s on our station because it's on 24 hours a day. So now it's time for the podcast. Fritz McIntyre of known as Simply Red. (laughs) A lot of people like Simply Red. He did a cut. Uh... If you don't know me by now. Right. I say it was eh. decent. Yeah, it was decent. Mm-hmm. I didn't get all excited about I it. I didn't either. I didn't know he was that old. Oh, How wow. old is he? He was born in 1952. I thought he was younger. No. The great Billy Preston. Now, that was a brother who could spank an organ and piano. He was a member of Sam Cooke's band early in life. He wrote... A ton of music. Yes. And he also, if you ever heard um, Little Red Rooster by Sam Cooke, you hear Sam say, play it for me, Billy. And he goes into this this organ solo. Mm-hmm. But he could spank the keys. He was so good, the keys lifted up off the <laughs> thing. He was, Another he product. in the air. <laughs> Another product of the Church of God in Christ, Billy Preston. And he wrote, You Are So Beautiful. A lot of people don't know that. You are so beautiful. But Joe Cocker brought well, it to well, That's life. right. Oh. Joe Cocker, when he sang it. Like he was having Tourette's or something. Yeah, like he was constipated. 
But that's okay. He made you believe that you were beautiful. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then Joe Simon. Ah, I've been choking. down one time. Yeah. I've been down two Be careful times. how many times you go down. <laughs> <laughs> Might not Drowning. be able to get back up. Drowning in the sea of The bishop, love. Joe Simon. Yeah. He's got yeah. a church in Chicago. Right. Yeah, he's a bishop now. Mm-hmm. He was an apostle. Mm-hmm. Now he's a bishop. What's the order? I what don't do you, know. Because okay. <laughs> I'm like, is it like you start off like a member? All I know is give me a good sermon and I'm good. All right? <laughs> there we go. you go up to be like a deacon. <laughs> and then from a deacon you get to be like a, I don't know. I, I don't, don't know, know the know. orders of those things. All I know is that's what they call them in the church. Is that, okay. That's it? For, yeah, because tomorrow, you know, usually we do the two days, but I don't think these two people. Do you know Daryl Payne? Yeah. Who is Daryl Payne? Sounds familiar. I, I knew a dude that I might have gone to school with named Daryl Payne. I don't know this person. But today in black history. I was not through. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. But today in music history, September 2nd, 1995, Michael Jackson's You Are Not Alone. You are now He wasn't. Alone. He always had bubbles or somebody. Becomes the first song ever to debut at number one. It did? In the 1980s. On ni- what chart? Uh, on what? Pop chart? Uh, it doesn't say. Be. It doesn't say. In 1995, Jackson was a huge star, but was no longer in his, you know, height of his renown. That's what they say it here. I don't agree with that. But anyway... Uh, the song was not just well received; it was historic in its acceptance by the public. So much so, it became the first song in the 37-year history of the Billboard Hot 100 there you go. to debut at number one in the U.S. It also topped the charts in several other countries, and ultimately was certified as a platinum single and a Grammy Award nominee. And it was on the album "History: Past, Present, and Future" Book One. Ironically, "You Are Not Alone." became Jackson's last number one pop song. The King of Pop would continue to record with less frequency and less, 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 less success. Guess who wrote it for him? Who? Take a guess. Give me a, give me a clue. <laughs> yeah, if I give you a clue, you'll guess. David Foster? No. No. Who? Ara. R. Kelly? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and you are not alone. That's prophetic on his part. Yeah, he is alone. alone now. Well, maybe not. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was written by R&B bad boy Ara Kelly. And it debuted at number one? Debuted at number one. So Ara got some money. He just hiding it. I ain't mad at him. It's probably offshore somewhere. It's- young, young Billy. Pressing on that organ, playing for Sam. See, Sam brought all them brothers out of the church with him. Mm-hmm. He he worked everybody. He gave everybody a job. He was kind of like the MC Hammer of his day. He, em- <laughs> he employed the whole neighborhood. <laughs> you, you see, okay, why not? You need a job? Okay, you just sweep around the studio. <laughs> Billy Preston had to be about 18 when he was playing on that particular song. And he could play like Man, anything then. He would beat that organ like like it stole something. Yep. <laughs> Billy Preston was, I think, you know, because we don't know him, we know him as a singer. I think people don't realize what a very, mm. very talented pianist oh. and oh. organist he oh. really was. And you find very few people, I could be wrong, but I don't think so, that can play piano and organ. Well, I mean, you can. But here's the, here's the difference. Playing that organ, you use your whole body. Yeah, you use your feet. Your whole body. Yeah. Piano, not so much. Well, you got some pedals. You on got there. three pedals. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. 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 There you go. There you go. Or as I used to call it when I was growing up, the soft, the medium, <laughs> and the loud pedal. <laughs> That's what they do? That's what they do. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. So you play, you push push down one pedal and it makes it louder, a piano? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit. And then there's one that makes it more uh, 
Gee, I forgot the term. I uh, and piano, your mama was so, a yeah, you yeah. Go. And I haven't played piano in so long. I've completely forgotten, but it makes it um, sing a little bit more. Now, did you know? It isn't so much striking. It, it make, blends. Makes it blend. Yeah. Did you know a piano is actually a harp in a box? Yes. Oh, I'm glad you did. Well, most if you folks look, don't. If, if you look at the, uh, the grand shape. piano, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like and them that. women that play those harps, man, they got long arms. Uh, uh, they don't sound like that, but yeah, they do. <laughs> they could. <laughs> so today is Billy Preston's birthday. So yeah, this is great salute. You got to play some more Billy Preston. Let people hear him, either as an accompanist. Oh, or big word. as yeah, big word. Now if you watched American Bandstand when they were getting ready to go to commercial. That was his song. Which song? Bow, bow, bow. It's called Outer song. Space. Oh, Outer Space and, was like... And you watched American Bandstand? Not yeah, so much? No. I did. That was Billy Preston's song. I know Outer Space, but it didn't sound like that. Yeah, well, that's my interpretation. Well, don't, don't do that. Anyway, <laughs> you played Marvin Gaye at the top of the hour also. Marvin and Tammy. Uh-huh. Marvin, Marvin and Tammy. Uh-huh. Well, today Whoa. marks 50 years that Marvin Gaye tried out to be a Detroit Lions football player. He got knocked on his ass. It's a story that's <laughs> well known among Detroit people, but not so much, <laughs> not so in, much in general. And so in the late 60s, yeah. Marvin Gaye had become close friends with the Lions offensive and defensive stars running back Mel Farr. Mm-hmm. And defensive back Lim Barney, mm-hmm. who was a Hall of Famer now, mm-hmm. and gay, an avid sports fan, and good friend, and a good athlete, they said, uh-huh. was an avid football. He was a football fanatic. He was a nut. And he pestered Far and Barney to get him a tryout <laughs> with the Lions, <laughs> whose coach, Joe Schmidt, <laughs> ran a fairly loose training camp, so of course he let him come on. Yeah. After weeks of talking about it, Schmidt finally relented in the summer of 1970, 50 years ago, and gave Gay a tryout. Gay made uh, a gym in his garage, and he bulked up. Mm-hmm. And even as he began running five miles a day, and it became a big deal locally when he announced the upcoming tryout on television. While he was a good athlete, it takes a <laughs> lot more than that to make a pro football team. I can't see him as a football player. He was kind of okay. Small. Now he was lightweight. Wasn't let, he? Let's take the song "Got to Give It Up." You hear all those people in early when it comes on. Exactly, they are the, the Detroit, Detroit Lions, Lions. <laughs> right? So he didn't make it, but uh, they scratched. He he finally got over it, and he returned. Uh, the favor a year later as the Detroit Lions appeared on his now legendary album, yep. What's, going, What's on? going On. You can hear their back and forth conversations in the background yeah, of the seminal title cut. They even both received a gold album for their work because they, of course, were on the album. On the album. So they, yeah. So I, Marvin Gaye tried out for the Detroit Lions. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I went to see them on the 21st of September in Chicago. 19 what? No, a couple of years ago. Is when that they right? Were over oh, there. okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And, it, and they made comment, oh, wow, it's the, you know, and they sang the song. And they said, it's appropriate that we sing it here because we're from Chicago. And the crowd was like, yeah. Yeah, people don't know that. They think they're from Los Angeles. I know, but they're from Chicago. They're from Chicago, uh, the north side. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And 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 it was so funny because most of the people there were not African American. Oh no, it, that's that's always the same. I was like, where is everybody? Man, please, come on. And this little girl, well, she wasn't little. She was maybe in her twenties. Uh huh. Young lady came into the ladies' room, and she was like. Oh, man, I'm just so glad to see Earth, Wind, and Fire because my parents, like, play their music all the time. And it's really good that they're still alive. And everybody looked at her like. You wanted to slap her silly, didn't you? I know you did. (laughs) Oh, she was like, ah. It was like they were ancient people or something. (laughs) 
Well, to her, maybe so. Yeah, I guess so. You know, you know. It, that's the way it is. No, but I always appreciated, no matter what generation of music it was that I liked, I always appreciated too. So it was good that she was there because she was so excited. Oh my God. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, baby, you need to hang out in the hood. A right, bit. I was like, <laughs> Dr. Dre, the hit, you know, the hip hop, yeah. Dr. Dre. Who's a billionaire. His he wife, made the billionaire list, I think. He did. I think, no. He, on the list was, uh, what's his name? I told you. Tyler. Tyler, Perry. yeah. But Dr. Dre is $800 million. Well, some of that is about to go down. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. But I Maybe. told you what she was asking for. She wants $2 million a month. Right. And I'm like, that's not, well, hey, if she was with him from she, Jump Street. She, she wasn't. She, she wasn't. She wasn't with him from no. Jump Street? No. No, okay. no. Because if she was with him from jump, no, then she's entitled to two million a month. His mama was with him from jump. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't nowhere to be found. So she wasn't like uh, Brenda with Hell uh, Lionel no. she Richie. Was, yeah. <laughs> Hello, is it me <laughs> you, you, you looking was, for? Hell yeah, I'm looking for you. Get out of that room. <laughs> I love Brenda. I love. She's my hero. Well, Brenda was with him when it was he was a Commodore. That's what I'm saying. But no, she's my hero because she went to the motel, knocked on the door. Get off my man. Beat both of them. She didn't just beat him. She beat <laughs> both of them. I'm like, that's how you do oh, it. Well, that's Brenda. a real Southern girl. That's Brenton Hay. Right. That's how you do it, Brent. But $2 million a month? No, that's a little. I don't that, know. That, I'm just a little. No, that's no, not. that's terrible. You might get a what? Well, I'm, she wants $2 million plus child support. And no, 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 wait a minute. Couldn't be no. ch- the kids are the grown. The kids are grown. She, but she, oh, no, I saw the list, what it was, how she broke it down. She wanted something like $125,000 for clothing allowance. Who wear that many drawers? Fruit of the loom. Five packs for a dollar. Well, I, uh, I two mean, mi- you How know, can you fix your mouth to well, say two million? Don't, see, this is why I never judge, because you're never in anybody's relationship. You don't know what went down in the relationship to make her say she wanted $2 million. Ah, what went down? Yeah. Within their relationship. You don't know. You can't say, you know, she doesn't deserve it. Maybe he beat her every day and she's like, I'm going to get my money back now. I can hear my wife now. Your stingy ass when you give nobody (laughs) nothing. Two million a month every thirty days. Hey, if he can afford it, he's worth eight hundred million. So, so that's not eight hundred million. That's not two hundred million. He makes two hundred million. He makes two million. Didn't he? Didn't he do beats by Dr. Dre? He sold the company for a billion. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, give me two million. I'll ask for it if I can get it. Now, Don't be stupid. Ask for what you know how you know oh how you God. do. You ask and you negotiate. Mm-hmm. That because uh, the second Mrs. Richie wanted something like a hundred and some thousand per month, and for alimony. No, it was thirty thousand dollars a month for alimony. Right. Then she wanted something like what? Something for clothes. Clothes and. Car or something. Lionel Stupid. said, "I got. To, I had to call my account. Do I? Do I make that kind of money? <laughs> <laughs> See, and that's why he needed to be beaten. Get you a good old Southern girl. But he had one. No, that was yeah, he did. <laughs> well, <laughs> and he went to the other side. They, dancing on the ceiling cost all that because you know, uh-huh. a brother making all that money look kind of good. Uh, what they call it, Karen." <laughs> <laughs> Felicia don't count no, no more. No, Felicia's gone. No. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Yeah, so now it's a Karen. <laughs> we, uh, I'm just saying. Mm. Yeah, so that he deserved to be. And, you know, as I've said before, I don't know if he, you know, we talk about David Foster, who was the producer for yeah. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Before yeah. that, he had been married. He has been married several times. I would just quit. But wait a minute. He said every time he gets married and divorced, every wife asks for royalties. From a song. From a song that he's written. 
He's written hundreds of songs. <laughs> he's got right like one. 20 Grammys. <laughs> and so every period of time, they get the royalties for those music. That he reminds them, he me. He gives them a part of the royalties. That reminds me of a story. Marvin Gaye did it right. You remember? How he signed, she wanted his She wanted, album. she said, no, I don't want no alimony. I want parts of the, how did she have it? I want parts from the sale of your next album. And it was the worst album Marvin could have done. Was that here, my dear? Here, my dear. Here. Barry laughed at it himself. <laughs> she should have never. She thought she, she should have, well, it didn't matter because he died. I was going to say she could have said sales of his, a percentage of his sales of his future albums, but it didn't matter because was Here, My Dear, the last one? No. No. Here, My Dear was like the last one on Motown. I That's think. what, yeah. I think it was Motown. could have been Columbia. I think it could have been Columbia. But it was before, let's get it up. No, it was before. Oh, no. No, it was before sexual healing. Okay, yeah, it was. And sexual healing sold Blew up. this billions. Right. She didn't get a quad. Yeah, my dear. <laughs> he made a crappy album. <laughs> it just didn't sell. He had the originals doing background for him and everything. Ooh, baby. <laughs> it was terrible. It was really terrible. Yeah. I think she may have gotten 3000 Maybe. $3,000? Maybe. Okay, I got a game for you. A quick little game. I found <laughs> the top 20 best TV show theme songs. I highly dispute <laughs> some of these songs. Some of them I don't know because I never watched the show. Uh, Maybe somebody else did. Because you know I didn't have cable for five years. Uh, I still and don't. still don't because I refuse <laughs> to get cable. <clears throat> anyway, and I really disagree with the number one song, even though it should be in the top five. It should not be number one. Now, this is the top ten? Well, we'll do the top ten. Yeah. Because the top 25. But you will, I have to read them because you will not believe the ones that are in the bottom as opposed to the ones that are in the top. I Totally disagree with this. Well, read, girl, read. Okay, so it starts with 25. <clears throat> 25th huh. one was The Sopranos. Now, I never watched The Sopranos. Did you? No. Yeah, I listened to the theme song. Uh huh. Your number 24 song, Your Show. Friends. Then, yes. I will there for you. <laughs> I'll be there for you. Okay, the next one, The Simpsons. Now, I like the beginning the of The Simpsons. I like the cartoon part. The song ain't all that great. Right. Now, I don't know this show at all. It's called The Deuce, and it was on HBO. You know, I ain't got cable, so I don't know. Okay. Got it. Never watched it. Family Matters. That was Urkel. And Blossom were tied. That was an 80s, you oh, know. Okay. God. Now, number 20, which I dispute, Green Acres. Hey, Green Acres should be up higher. It yeah, because that's rememberable. Yeah, because it it actually tells the story right. of the show that you're getting ready to watch. <laughs> and I totally disagree. It should be number ah, twenty. Just do a penthouse. <laughs> that's my line. Because when people you. like you say, "Oh, we should go down south," I say, "Ah, just a door penthouse view." <laughs> Darling, I love you, but give me Park Avenue. Okay. The yours. <laughs> the stars. Fresh, Fresh air. Times, Times Square. Square. You are my wife. Mm. Goodbye, Goodbye, City Life. life. <laughs> See, that's why I should be higher than 20. We don't have a life. No. Now, the next one should be higher, too. Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It should be top five. Come and listen to a story, story about, about a man named Jed. Poor mountaineer nearly kept the family fed. Who doesn't know that song? Shooting at a coon? No, shooting at some food. I thought it was coon. <laughs> <laughs> Up come a ground of bubbling crude. Okay. Black gold. Texas, Texas tea. tea. <laughs> All right, the next one is Laverne and Shirley. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Shimmy. Okay. Shimmy. 
Hops and Bevs Incorporated. That's what they said? Hops and Bevs? Hops and Bevs Incorporated, because that was the name of where they worked, Shlemiel, Shlemago, Uh Hops and Bevs. You remember they worked at the beer? Beer company, yeah. Hops and Bevs. All right. Okay. Move on. Growing Pains. Now, you may not remember this one, but this was an excellent song. He was written by Alan Thicke, wasn't it? Yes. Show me that smile again. Yeah, Alan Thicke's senior. My mother loved that song because the last two years that they were on, they did it acapulco. <laughs> or as most people know, acapella. Okay. And she was like, that harmony is just fantastic. She uh, loved it. She would wait to hear it just to see the, the song. Now, I remember the show Simon and Simon, but their theme song. Uh-uh, not so much. Heart to Heart. I loved Heart to Heart, but I don't remember the theme song. Now, what are the Golden Girls in there? That's next, number 14. I dispute it that. It should be higher. It should be in the top five. Yeah. Because everybody. My wife even loves that song. Thank you for being, being a, a friend. friend. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, it's a great song. Okay, the Rockford Files is higher than Golden Girls. And I remember the that Rockford Files. That was just Files. instrumental. Yes, it was. I dispute that. Okay. Now, Frasier is in there. And Frasier's song was, you know, uh, yeah, no. Uh-huh. You know, I, the show was great, but the, yeah. The only cartoon that's in there is DuckTales. And I know you probably don't remember that. That was a 90s cartoon. I used to watch it before. I, I, I heard of it. I used to watch it. Never watched it. And then there's another show called Get a Life. It was only on for two years. It was with Chris Elliott. He played a 30-year-old slacker who delivered newspapers. <laughs> it was funny. Because you know who Chris Elliott is? You know him when you see him. Okay. It was funny, but it was only on for two years. Okay, so now we get the top ten. Highly disputable. Malcolm in the Middle, which is a show that's Courtney's generation. But the song wasn't that good. <clears throat> now, Drew Carey, you remember Drew Carey? Vegan. You remember how they used to dance through Cleveland? Oh, when he yeah. used to come mm-hmm. on? Okay, it was different. The next, uh, the next one is The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Who? It's, on, it's, a, <laughs> it's a Netflix show. You had to. It's good. It's a good little song. Do I actually pay for this? <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we get into the top. This is the top seven. The Jeffersons. That should be number one. I would say in the top that, five. That, would, that should be, well, okay. We don't know that, that rocked everybody. That should be number one. Because everybody kind of remembers that. They at, got, well, if the Jeffersons in the top seven, you better say good times. They tied. They, huh? Why? Because mm, they black. I probably. <laughs> Anyway, they put they got Magnum PI up here. I'm like, I don't remember a theme song for Magnum. I don't even it remember had a the theme song, song, but I don't even remember it. Go it's on. not rememberable. Okay. The Muppet Show, which I, I agree. agree with. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> now just imagine you watching the Muppet Show and you high. <laughs> you gonna really? You gonna <laughs> want to jump through the TV because because <laughs> everything is moving. moving. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, CBD. <laughs> the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I agree. What number? What four? Okay. Now I never watched this show. Baywatch. Did you watch Baywatch? No. Uh, uh, mm. So I mean, come on. Ain't nothing exciting about and the last two around. and the last two Wonder Years, uh, which is really should not be because it's a remake. Uh, your your boy sang it. Uh, you are so beautiful. Oh, Belushi? Oh, Cocker? Yeah, he or, did. Uh, and it was a remake of a pop song, so I, I wouldn't even do that one. And then they got number one, Cheers. Now, I like the theme song from Cheers. I don't think it should be number one. It should be in maybe the top 15. Making your way through all the day. Yeah. That's all you want to go where everybody knows your name. Obviously, we watched it. That's why I said it should be. And they're always glad. I went to Boston and saw the Bull Finch Pub. Okay. Uh Good for you. Yeah. I went to New York and saw the Seinfeld Seinfeld, uh, restaurant. Yeah. Uh Looks nothing like I like Cheers, but I wouldn't say it. Me, number one for me would have been the Jeffersons. Now, there are some that aren't on here that I think should be on here. To me, Mission Impossible. Yeah. It didn't even make the list. 
And you know, that's my ringtone. And see, that's what's going on with like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame today. All the people that are doing the voting are the ones that don't know pretty right. much what they're talking about. And actually, SWAT. Remember SWAT? Yeah, that was a bad song. Yeah. We, they turned that into da, 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 We da, played da, that in band. Da, da, da. <laughs> we, we did too. <laughs> we did too. Da, 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 da. Okay. That was a great one. And Andy Griffith is not on there. Yeah. Iconic. So now uh, some other news. We have a great 2021 music calendar that we're selling. So we hope that you'll go to our site, www.thesoundofsoul.net and take a look at that because um, 2021 is coming. No matter what we think, Hopefully it'll be here and you want to know um, every day that we're going to be celebrating birthdays of R&B stars. So on that calendar, you have uh, birthdays of some very famous R&B stars, not just singers, but producers and, and record label people, uh, gospel, blues, uh, R&B stars. So please go take a look at our calendar. It's our fundraiser for the year for the soundofsoul.net. And finally, I want you to go to our soundofsoul.net website and sign up and be a part of our VIP membership group. I've got some other things that are going to be popping up on that site and you don't want to miss them. Okay, I think I've covered everything. Thanks for listening to The Back Cover. You can catch The Back Cover on TuneIn, Stitcher, and MyTuner. You can also listen to our show, The Ride Home, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, Central Standard Time, on www.thesoundofsoul.net. Please have your friends and family like and subscribe to our podcast. <laughs>